Learning about the Civil War can be difficult for someone new to the game, especially when it comes to military terminology. While many may have a casual familiarity with such terms as regiment, brigade, division, and corps, they often use them interchangeably, seemingly choosing whichever word sounds cool to them in the moment, or, to give the novice a little more credit, simply confusing them because they are new terms to him or her. But these terms are not interchangeable, as cool as they may sound, and they each have very specific meanings. These meanings vary from war to war and between nations, but we're not concerned with those meanings. For our purposes here, the definitions of these terms will focus on the American Civil War era military usage. This upload is designed to be one of many companion uploads to the main episodes of Addressing Gettysburg. This is the Gettysburg Glossary. A few things to note before moving on are that when discussing numbers of soldiers, there are two types of figures given here. The on paper figures, meaning what the respective unit's size should be if recruited and mustered into service at full strength, and the average numbers as they were at Gettysburg. So when listening to episode one, Antietam to Chancellorsville, for example, a brigade stated numerical strength would be somewhere between the on paper numbers and the Gettysburg average. Disease, including infection, was the number one cause of death during the Civil War. These diseases were contracted in various ways. Some were a result of behavior, many more were a result of camp life, and others were the result of medical treatments. Now a word about the Gettysburg average. All one needs to do is read two books on the Battle of Gettysburg to find that no one truly agrees on the actual number of men involved. Throughout the 15 and a half decades since the battle, scholars of the battle have looked at the numbers time and again in an effort to come closer to a more realistic figure of totals. Some historians have the numbers at 95,000 Union soldiers against 75,000 Confederate soldiers. Some say 80,000 to 60,000. The minutia of exactly how many each army had isn't as important as recognizing that most historians seem to agree that there's a difference of about 15,000 to 20,000 in favor of the Union. Also, it would be a mistake to assume that the Union victory at Gettysburg was mainly due to its outnumbering the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia. If that were the case, the North would have won the war long before April of 1865. So when it comes to the numbers used in addressing Gettysburg, they are used more for illustrative purposes than actuarial figures. When our sources are conflicting with each other on these numbers, we yield to the numbers used by the National Park Service of each battlefield we discuss, or the American Battlefield Trust. The terms discussed in this upload can be found, along with a multitude of others, on the American Battlefield Trust's website. We extrapolate on many of these definitions. And now, the Gettysburg Glossary. First, we will start with military units. Company. A group of 50 to 100 soldiers led by a captain. Ten companies equal one regiment. Smaller units within a company are platoons, which are made up of squads. Regiment. The building blocks of the army were regiments. On paper, each regiment was comprised of 10 companies of 100 men. Those companies would be recruited in a town or several nearby towns and sent to their respective state capitals to be trained and mustered into service as part of a regiment. Regiments would be numbered in order of appearance for the most part. For example, the 1st Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry, the 2nd Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry, etc. This was also done for cavalry units, with the word cavalry replacing the word infantry. So there would be a 1st Pennsylvania Volunteer Infantry and a 1st Pennsylvania Volunteer Cavalry. Volunteer regiments were men who answered the call for volunteers at the outbreak of the war and fell under the volunteer service. Regiments who were part of the Federal Service or Regular Army would be numbered as 1st United States Cavalry or Infantry and so on. As the war pressed on, these numbers diminished, so that by Gettysburg, the average size of a Union regiment was around 350 men, and a Confederate regiment being slightly larger. This was not a reflection of the populations in the North and South, but rather a reflection of the method of integrating raw recruits into the Army. Northern recruits 
were placed into new regiments, while Southern recruits were mingled into veteran regiments. A regiment was officially led by a field officer at the rank of colonel. When a colonel was absent due to sickness, wounding, death, or being placed in command of the brigade to which the regiment belonged, lower-ranking officers such as lieutenant colonels, majors, and even captains moved up to command the regiment. Multiple regiments would be organized into brigades. Brigade A brigade was typically three to five, sometimes six regiments. On paper, its strength should be 3,000 to 5,000 men. But by Gettysburg, the average Union Brigade might number around 1,000 to around 1,500 men, while its Confederate counterpart might be slightly larger. One noteworthy brigade was the Irish Brigade. At the Battle of Fredericksburg in December of 1862, the brigade numbered around 1,200 men and sustained about 45% casualties. In the interim months, they would sustain some more casualties at Chancellorsville, though not nearly as many, and would suffer the typical losses from sickness and disease. All of these factors combined to whittle their numbers down to just over 500 men by the time of the Battle of Gettysburg in July of 1863. Two to five brigades would make a division. Division. Once a brigade was formed, It was assigned to a division. In the Union Army at Gettysburg, a division typically had between two and four brigades. In the Confederate Army at Gettysburg, a division had between three and five brigades. Union divisions were numbered, and their respective corps badges would be either red, white, or blue, indicating 1st Division, 2nd Division, or 3rd Division, respectively, although commonly, and in this podcast, we will refer to these divisions by the commander's names. Confederate divisions were named for their commanders. This could lead to some confusion when the commander for which the division is named is out of action. At Gettysburg, for example, when Pettigrew rose to command Heath's division after Heath was wounded on the first day, it was still known as Heath's division. But for simplicity's sake, addressing Gettysburg will make note of the change of commanders and refer to it as Pettigrew's division when discussing its participation in the battle on July 3rd as it assaulted the Union Center during what is known as Pickett's Charge. Two or more divisions made a corps. Corps. A very large group of soldiers, led by a major general in the Union Army or a lieutenant general in the Confederate Army. Union Corps were designated by a Roman numeral while Confederate Corps were also numbered, but often called by the name of their commanding general, as in Longstreet's Corps. Two or more divisions make up a corps. At Gettysburg, the average Union Corps numbered somewhere around 10,000 men, with the 6th Corps coming in slightly larger with between 14,000 and 16,000, depending on your source. A Confederate Corps will be about double the size of its Union counterpart. Two or more Corps make an army. Army The largest organizational group of soldiers, made up of one or more Corps. There were 16 Union armies, named after rivers, such as the Army of the Potomac, and 23 Confederate armies, named after states or regions, such as the Army of Northern Virginia. At Gettysburg, only the Union Army of the Potomac and the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia would be engaged. Infantry. That branch of the army in which soldiers traveled by foot. Infantry was the main fighting force of the army. It was called on to take positions or hold positions. Cavalry. That branch of the army in which soldiers traveled by horse. Cavalry's role was to gather intelligence, screen the movements of the main body of the army, guard the rear of the army, supplies, prisoners, wagon trains, etc. It might help the listener to think of cavalry as essentially scouts. This is because the absence of Jeb Stewart's cavalry in the Confederate army will play into many of the decisions that Robert E. Lee made during the three-day battle. Artillery That branch of the army that organized, dispersed, and operated cannon, rifled guns, and mortars of the field, siege, and naval classes. Artillery at Gettysburg was of the field artillery classification. Other terms used in addressing Gettysburg in alphabetical order. 
aide de camp, a soldier who was appointed by an officer to be his confidential assistant. The aide wrote and delivered orders and held a position of responsibility which required him to know troop positions and where officers' headquarters were located. The aide de camp was an officer by virtue of his position, and he took orders from his commander only. Battery. The basic unit of soldiers in an artillery regiment, similar to a company in an infantry regiment. Batteries included six cannon with the horses, ammunition, and equipment needed to move and fire them, 155 men, a captain, 30 other officers, two buglers, 52 drivers, and 70 cannoneers. As the war dragged on, very few batteries fought at full strength. A battery can also refer to the position on a battlefield where cannon are located. Bivouac a temporary soldier encampment in which soldiers were provided no shelter other than that which could be assembled quickly, such as branches. Bivouac can also mean sleeping in the open. Border states. The states of Maryland, Delaware, Kentucky, and Missouri. Although these states did not officially join the Confederacy, many of their citizens supported the South. Breastworks. Barriers which were about breast high and protected soldiers from enemy fire. Breach loading. Firearms that were loaded at the breech or back of a gun. Campaign. A series of military operations that form a distinct phase of the war. Canister. Canister shot was the deadliest type of ammunition for artillery consisting of a thin metal container loaded with layers of lead or iron balls packed in sawdust. Upon exiting the muzzle, the container disintegrated and the balls fanned out like pellets in a shotgun blast. The effective range of canister was only 400 yards, but within that range, dozens of enemy soldiers could be mowed down. Even more devastating was double canister, generally used only in dire circumstances at extremely close range, where two containers of balls were fired simultaneously. Carbine. A breech-loading, single-shot, rifled-barreled gun primarily used by cavalry troops. A carbine's barrel is several inches shorter than a regular rifled musket. Case, or shrapnel shot. Case, or spherical case for smoothbores, were anti-personnel projectiles carrying a smaller burst charge than a shell, but designed to be more effective against exposed troops. While a shell produced only a few large fragments, Case was loaded with lead or iron balls and was designed to burst above and before the enemy line, showering down many more small but destructive projectiles on the enemy. The effect was analogous to a weaker version of canister. With case, the lethality of the balls and fragments came from the velocity of the projectile itself. The small burst charge only fragmented the case and dispersed the shrapnel. The spherical case used in a 12-pounder Napoleon contained 78 balls. The word shrapnel derives from its inventor, Henry Shrapnel. The primary limitations to Case's effectiveness came in judging the range, setting the fuse accordingly, and the reliability and variability of the fuse itself. Caisson. The caisson was a two-wheeled carriage. It carried two ammunition chests and a spare wheel in support of an artillery piece. A fully loaded limber and caisson combination weighed over 3,000 pounds. The limbers, caissons, and gun carriages were all constructed of oak. Each ammunition chest typically carried about 500 pounds of ammunition or supplies. In addition to these vehicles, there were also battery supply wagons and portable forges that were used to service the guns. Charge To rush towards the enemy. A charge can refer to the act of rushing the enemy's lines by cavalry or infantry, but also the amount of gunpowder loaded into a firearm in order to send the projectile out of the gun's barrel. Courier. A soldier who served the officers of his unit by carrying messages. To defeat in detail. Defeating a military force unit by unit. 
This occurred when units were unable to support one another, often because of distance. Dysentery. Intestinal disease causing severe diarrhea. Dysentery was a leading cause of deaths by disease in the Civil War. Entrenchments. Long cuts or trenches dug out of the earth with the dirt piled up into a mound in front, used for defense. Earthwork. A field fortification such as a trench or a mound made of earth. Earthworks were used to protect troops during battles or sieges, to protect artillery batteries, and to slow an advancing enemy. Flank. Used as a noun, a flank is the end or side of a military position, also called a wing. An unprotected flank is in the air, while a protected flank is a refused flank. Used as a verb, to flank, is to move around and gain the side of an enemy position, avoiding a frontal assault. Garrison. A group of soldiers stationed at a military post. Grape shot. Grape shot, by the time of Gettysburg, was relegated to a term used interchangeably with canister. While similar to canister, grape shot originated in naval use for firing into an enemy ship at close range in order to cut the rigging and sails and clear the decks of personnel. While grape shot was used for a period of time in the field, canister had come to replace grape shot's use on land in the American Civil War. The period Ordnance and Gunnery Work states that grape was excluded from field and mountain services. In many first-hand accounts from the Battle of Gettysburg, Grape shot is referred to, though it was technically not used. Hardtack. Hardtack is a term used to describe the hard crackers often issued to soldiers of both sides of the Civil War. These crackers consisted of nothing more than flour, water, and salt. They were simple and inexpensive to make in very large quantities. However, these crackers became almost rock solid once they went stale. To picture hardtack, Imagine a swollen saltine. Haversack. A small canvas bag, about one foot square, used to carry a soldier's food and personal items. Typically, these bags were painted with black tar to make them waterproof. Howitzer. A cannon which fired hollow projectiles and was generally lighter and shorter than its solid shot cousins. A howitzer's projectiles had a smaller powder charge. Also, canister projectiles contained more small balls than other types of canister. Howitzers were useful in defending fortifications and causing disorder within a fortification by an attacking force. Interior Lines A military strategy which holds that the fastest, most efficient maneuvers, transportation, and communication are conducted within an enclosed geographic area, as opposed to outside the geographic area. At the Battle of Gettysburg, the Union position is considered interior lines, while the Confederate position is considered exterior lines. Limber. A two-wheeled cart that carried one ammunition chest for an artillery piece. The artillery piece could be attached to the limber, which would allow both to be pulled by a team of horses. Also as a verb, the practice of attaching a piece of artillery to a limber that holds its ammunition. Militia. Troops, like the National Guard, who are only called out to defend the land in an emergency. Muster. To formally enroll in an army or to call roll. Muzzle loading. Muzzle loading muskets or rifled muskets had to be loaded from the end by putting the gunpowder and the bullet or ball down the barrel. The vast majority of small arms and artillery used at Gettysburg were muzzle loading weapons. Napoleon gun. Another name for the model 1857 gun howitzer. This lighter, more maneuverable field artillery piece fired 12-pound projectiles and was very popular with both Federal and Confederate armies. Napoleonic Tactics The tactics used by Napoleon Bonaparte that were studied by military men and cadets at West Point before the Civil War. 
His tactics were brilliant for the technology of warfare at the time he was fighting. However, by the Civil War, weapons had longer ranges and were more accurate than they had been in Napoleon's day. Ordnance. The term used for military supplies, such as weaponry and ammunition. Parrot gun. A rifled artillery piece with a reinforcing band at the rear or breech. Parrot guns were used by both the Army and the Navy and ranged from 10 pounders to 300 pounders. They were named for their designer, Robert Parker Parrot. Picket. Soldiers posted on guard ahead of a main force. Pickets included about 40 or 50 men each. Several pickets would form a rough line in front of the army's main camp. In case of an enemy attack, the pickets usually would have time to warn the rest of the force. During the Gettysburg campaign, it was a picket line that first encountered Longstreet's spy named Harrison and brought him to Longstreet's chief of staff, Moxley Sorrell. Pontoon Bridge a floating bridge which was constructed by anchoring a series of large, flat-bottomed boats across a waterway and then laying wooden planks across them. The planks, also known as the chess, were anchored by side rails and then covered with a layer of soil to protect it and to dampen sound. Pontoon bridges were extremely important to the outcome of several battles, including Fredericksburg. Quartermaster the officer who was responsible for supplying clothing, supplies, and food for the troops. Reserve. Part of the army, which was held from fighting during a particular battle, but ready and available to fight if necessary. Rifle musket. The common weapon of the Civil War infantry. It was a firearm fired from the shoulder. It differed from a regular musket by the grooves called rifling cut into the inside of the barrel. When the exploding power thrust the bullet forward, the grooves in the barrel made it spin just like a football spirals through the air. Rifled muskets were more accurate and had longer ranges than their smoothbore counterparts. Shot. A solid projectile shot from a cannon. Shell. A hollow projectile shot from a cannon. A shell was filled with powder and lit by a fuse when it was fired. Shells exploded when their fuse burned down to the level of the powder. Depending on the length of the fuse, artillerymen could decide when they wanted the shell to burst. Skirmish. A minor fight. Spike. To make an artillery piece unusable so that it could not be used by the enemy if captured. Theater. A theater of war is a region or area where fighting takes place. Traverse. A mound of earth used to protect gun positions from explosion or to defilade the inside of a field work or fortification. Vedette or videt. A mounted sentry stationed in advance of a picket line. Works. Fortified structures designed to strengthen a position in battle. This includes earthworks, fieldworks, entrenchments, breastworks, siege lines, etc. Zouave. A Zouave regiment was characterized by its soldiers' bright, colorful uniforms, which usually included baggy trousers, a vest, and a fez in different combinations of red, white, and blue. American Zouave units were found in both Union and Confederate armies. They were modeled after French African troops who were known for their bravery and marksmanship. For more information about the Battle of Gettysburg and the Civil War, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or go to AddressingGettysburg.com. This glossary was compiled by Matt Callery from various online sources including Battlefields.org and NPS.gov, and with the assistance of licensed battlefield guide Lewis Trott.